everyone. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. Welcome back to Build. The film Bikini Moon tells the story of a homeless veteran named Bikini whose life is being chronicled by a group of ambitious documentary filmmakers. However, lines quickly begin to blur as the crew struggles to keep the charismatic but unpredictable Bikini on her feet and complete their project. Today, I'll be joined by the film's lead, four-time Tony nominee, Condola Rashad, and director Mil Milcho Machevsky, who's a tough name, but first a trailer from Bikini Moon. How do you know when something that seems real is not real? I really fucked up this time. Name? My name is Bikini. It's an interesting name. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, I'm just so sad. You're a vet? Yes, I am. I've been looking all over the place for you. I checked everywhere. Where have you been? Did you kill anyone? He took my daughter. I spy with my little eyes. I know where they live. I don't know what she wants. She's crazy. Fuck oh, Stop stalking us. No, no, no. Yeah. Hey, do you want to help me get my daughter back? Well, yes or no? <clears throat> Us that that little girl was her fucking daughter. She was stalking those fucking no, people. she was confused. Oh, no, to camera. Kyra, this is wrong. You don't get to have my fucking life. I don't want your fucking life. I just want my film back. You Stop. 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 What'd you expect? This is what you fucking wanted. She's here. <laughs> I wish you were here. That's Please. my daughter, and you don't know what that feels like! <laughs> Everyone, please help me welcome Condola Rashad and Milcho Machevsky. It's a heavy trailer. There's a lot going on. Right, I heard her. She was. She goes. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how fun is that though to watch something that you guys worked on and see that reaction from people when they watch the trailer? Well, we were just <laughs> saying as the trailer was happening, he turned to me. He said, "Do you remember that?" And I was like, vaguely. We were just talking um, right just before this, where it, it really actually does feel like a dream filming it. So when I see it, I'm like, oh, I have bits and pieces of memories of doing it. It's really weird. Because the, 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 the film itself is, is sort of like a dream. It, it keeps moving back and forth. We, um, I mean, it was a, constructed very meticulously, but then to feel like you're not exactly sure what's going on until it clicks together. Um, but it's also how we remember it, how re we remember making it. Yeah. How long ago did you guys film it? Um, two years. Almost two years okay, ago. Okay, so yeah, it's More been a little bit. Was it? Yeah, like two two years. Yeah, it was yeah. June. Yeah, June of 2016. Definitely. It's finally coming back to New York. I mean, it played a bunch of mm -hmm. festivals and places, and now it's coming home. Yeah. So take me through how this story came to be, Milcho. Um, it's it's about questioning the truth. You know, when we watch a documentary or something that's based on a real story, um, we think we're watching the truth, and it's never the case. It's it's always uh, filtered through. Uh, the person talking through the filmmaker, through whoever is telling you the story, um, and there's there's always some distortion. So this is an exploration of how far you can you can go, um, and what are the different shapes that truth can can take. Uh, so it's a document. It, it it looks like a documentary, but it's not. Um, and then at one point it it enters the the mind of of Bikini Moon. So it cannot be a documentary. <laughs> That's what got me on board. Yeah, and this. No, I'm not kidding. When I read the when I read the script originally, I mean, I thought it was great, and then what he just mentioned happened. And I was like, oh, I want to. This is I want to do this. 
And I had that same reaction when I was watching. I was like, oh, oh. I was like, her. I was like, okay, oh. this is, this is exciting. <laughs> it's a whole new a dynamic. Whole level. Let's yeah. talk about Bikini because as he's talking about what is truth, what is reality, and that is even more important with the character as dynamic as Bikini, who describes herself as a carpenter like Jesus with tits. tits. Yeah. How else would you describe her? Um, bikini is childlike. Bikini is um, incredibly tough and dangerously fragile. Um, Bikini is hopeful. Bikini is incredibly hopeless. She's literally um, the extreme of many words. Um, She's excitable. She's also, parts of her are are dead maybe, you know, so she, but I think the, the biggest thing about Bikini for me was I, when I read the script, there were certain lines that she would say that I could see where, you know, someone might just say, oh, she's she's crazy, she's nuts. So, like, just play her like she's nuts, you know? But to me, the challenge was, no, that might not make sense to me. That response might not make sense to me because I am not living in her reality. But what makes it more interesting to me and what was more respectful approach, approach for me was, what is it like to live in the shoes of someone where that does make sense. And it doesn't make sense to anybody else. So to me, every single line that she says, I had to find, well, what is she, why did she say that at that moment? Nobody else will know because it it, it, technically to our brains, that's not an appropriate answer. But it's always coming from something that's real for her. But she doesn't have the language to explain everything the way that we all do. She doesn't have the same faculties. So how frustrating must that be if you speak a language and you live in a world where nobody speaks that language? And that's what a lot of people uh, go through, you know, for many different reasons, whether it's mental, whatever it is, there are many people that speak a language that nobody else speaks and they're fighting every single day to get through their lives. And and we did a lot of research. Um, It was based on, on, on research on what it feels like to... Uh, to have symptoms of, of bipolar disorder, PTSD, um, sexual abuse, uh, someone who is homeless, who's fighting for custody of her daughter, whom we're not sure uh, whether she exists, et cetera. So it was, it was all mapped out and then uh, brought to the screen. It sounds like you, t- you took a lot of responsibility in making sure you weren't playing this caricature of what yes. mental illness looked like. That was my, big, that w- my biggest intention when I took this on is that I'm going to do this as respectfully as I possibly can uh, because I personally do not suffer from that illness and so I didn't want to make a mockery of it and I didn't want to, um, yeah, as you said, I didn't want to make a caricature. I wanted to, to really respectfully dive in and... and, and respect the fact that I don't have that experience and respect the fact that I'm the one telling the story. So I, it, it, takes, it took respect to do that. And yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of work to get into that mindset. Uh, was it difficult to leave that on set sometimes when you go home or how quickly can uh. you, cause it's, she is so dynamic and there's so much going on. And I can imagine some of those scenes you had to play and then you had to <laughs> go home and meet your friends for dinner. Like how do you? So my, you know? uh, I was uh, I was dating someone at the time, and uh, I would say that I left it on the set very easily. I don't know how he I don't know how he would uh, think I don't know what he'd think about that. He might have something else to say, but I'm not with him anymore, so he doesn't get to say anything about it today. Um, <laughs> no, it was on the table when you left. <laughs> yeah, no, but um, actually, it it um, there were some scenes in particular that really shook me to the core uh, that I wasn't expecting um, because I, I had created a space where I like had my own rituals as to how to walk into this character and how to leave it, you know, and how to always create a boundary because it was a really was a, quite a rabbit hole for me to go on. And uh, so I, um, I would actively step out of this. Like it wasn't, it, there were certain things that I would do like, okay, and now we're done for the day. <laughs> leaving this outside and you know like I said I don't know what he had to say about that but (laughs) who cares (laughs) I'm sure it's great um so one thing I loved and you sort of touched on this already was the reality part of it and we have so many so much reality television now and documentaries and there's always that fine line between exploitation Mm -hmm. and storytelling and that's something that is very much examined in this film why was that important for you to to talk about um because I, I always question what we do um, as, as filmmakers, we, uh, we manipulate things. That's our job. 
the question is, are you manipulating um, in service of a bigger truth? Or are you manipulating just to make a film that's you know, gonna get you to the red carpet and, and, and get you a big fat check? Um, so it's, it's that manipulation and it's the morality of the media that, that I, was, I was interested in. Um, and the manipulation in, in how we treat it. So in, in this film, you have a group of filmmakers who are um, actually not that scrupulous about how they treat their subject. And they enter her world, and she's very fragile. So they both get screwed over that. They also sort of insert themselves into the documentary which is problematic, and you, there's questions of ethics there too. Of course, I mean, it, 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 it starts with them wanting to make a cinema verite mm -hmm. type of documentary, direct cinema, where um, the, the director in the film tries to explain uh, pompously that uh, you know he's breaking the illusion, um, he doesn't mind if you see the microphone, if you see the camera, if you see the process while it's being being, uh, constructed while well, the film is being constructed, all of that is fine. But then, um, at the same time, uh, he manipulates the truth for the sake of his film. Um, and I mean, we're all filmmakers today. It's like we we all carry cameras, we all make little films, we all post what we shoot. There's just so much documentary footage floating around. Um, but that doesn't mean we know more about the. The, the actual truth about, about what is going on. There's just more data, but that doesn't mean we know more. Interesting. The thing I loved about Bikini is that the moment you want to kind of make her a victim, you realize she's playing her own game yep. and she's also yeah. manipulating them. And so I spent a lot of the movie not really realizing or knowing who was in control. How fun was that to play that kind of dynamic? I mean, we really, really worked on it, you know, and even with um, our my beloved castmates who were phenomenal, like from day one, I'm so glad we had, thank you for putting that cast together because we really, really were so dedicated to finding the balance in, in every single scene. Like, okay, so what what is this? And we so we, we were able to play, and but but it was fun because that is that is a big part of this film where she's, it, it's like you, you think she's unaware of certain things, but then you realize, oh no, she's actually quite perceptive. And she actually is aware that, that they are taking advantage of her. And so she kind of finds her way to turn that around. Nothing is as it seems. Yeah. That's, I guess that's the message of the film. Yeah. yeah. And so even some of, the, some of the things that she gives them, some of the, the little crumbs she gives them, you don't really know whether that's true or not. She might have just done that because she needed something out of it. And she realized it. I, th I don't want to give anything away, but, but there was like, there's like some... I forget, there's like some part in the film where Trevor, Trevor is the, the lead documentarian, he asks her a question about something and the way that she responds is like, is that what you want me to say? Is that what you want me to say? Because I can say it if that's what you'd like. That's what you want, right? You know, so also it's deflecting and making them be vulnerable, like she's <laughs> yeah. controlling their, I was yeah. like, damn. But then it, it's, it's really relatable because you have people like that in your life who you can see them navigating situations and sort of playing both sides. And so mm -hmm. she was this really fun character to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that we all are filmmakers now. We have our cameras and you utilize that in the film. So there's oh, yeah. not just one style of yeah. camera shot or shooting. <laughs> Why did you decide to switch it up so much and go from smartphones to there's even security camera kind of footage? <laughs> well, because this is supposedly a documentary, which is composed of footage that Trevor supposedly put together, but also there are moments when the cameras were not around. So you scramble and you try to find, is there a security camera? Is there an iPhone that, that filmed the moment? <laughs> it's like whatever helps you tell the story in a documentary that's not planned, of course that being a docu an old fashioned documentary, cinema verite. So then we, of course, we faked all the different, uh, uh, different formats. We yeah. shot on, uh, <laughs> that uh, was really shot on, the, on an iPhone. Yeah, there was one, there's actually, a, I think there's one in particular where we spend a lot of time on it because I'm actually, I'm totally the one filming the scene because they had to do it from, a, from a, an iPhone. So he just basically tell me like, okay, make sure at that moment you get, he's directing as to what he wants, but essentially I had to do it. It was really, it was really, really Because cool. we also see you in the mirror. Yeah, so there's like no we, way to fake yeah, it. Yeah, no, it was, <laughs> it was really cool. What was the most difficult scene then for you to shoot, mm. e either technically or emotionally? Um, something that at the end of the day, you're like, okay, that was exhausting. I think you know what it was. <laughs> yeah. You said. 
Um, there's a courtroom scene and something doesn't go the way that they planned. And it's the most explosive that we see her. And I had prepared for it and I had never done it. You know, I, I had worked on a lot of these scenes kind of in a free way because it, again, it's just a kind of film where you have to find it in the, in the moment of it, but I had worked on it. This one in particular, I like hadn't because I knew it was gonna be something that like, I don't know what this is gonna be actually. Uh, and as someone who doesn't have children, I, it was something that felt like, oh gosh, like how can I, this is literally an experience that I don't have. I'm gonna have to like really find something or call upon something to come through here because I don't have this experience. This not in my um, portfolio of experiences. Yeah, um, but uh, something happened magically and uh, we were able to, to go where we needed to go, but I didn't realize how much it was going to take and I, I found it very interesting because I'm I'm a pretty tough cookie actually right I'm a pretty tough oh boy <laughs> I'm a pretty tough cookie right but after we filmed this scene I'll never forget I had it it was so interesting I um we because obviously we have to do so many takes of it and that was the other thing so it was like okay so we just did that that felt like the most explosive emotional thing I've ever done and we have to do that how many more times so but I remember when we were doing it it was just like nobody talk. Like it was cut, do it again. Like just we can't we can't really talk about it because we have to do it so many times. And I genuinely physically didn't know how I was going to be able to do it so many times. So we just had to do it. And then at the end, I remember I like walked out of the room, and it was not even a mental emotional thing. It was physical. But I grieved for like 10 minutes. And again, not, I, I, there was nothing in my head. I wasn't like, oh, I'm so sad. No, I was fine. But just physically going through the motions of that actually put my body into some kind of, I don't know, it was, in, it was interesting. And I wasn't you, expecting it. You know, what's interesting is like we, we stage it. You know what's going to happen. You storyboard it. We rehearse it. Um, but w So you know what's, what's coming. But with this one, it felt like a documentary. Like we're watching you really experience what it's about. And that's why it was like dead silence on the set. I was shocked when, and, and, and at first we, we only see the door and we hear you uh, behind the door, the other side that's of the right. door, and there's the, the, this blood curling scream and you storm out and you're like, oh <laughs> shit, <laughs> where are we? <laughs> yeah. And it's such a heavy time in the movie because by this time you know, you know her a little bit and you know of her past traumas and the fact that she's a veteran and sort of been in this cycle of homelessness. So why were those pieces mm -hmm. of her story so important for you to add? Because I do, there is a conversation to be had about homelessness and mental health and, and just that cycle. The and how too. you end up homeless, yeah. right. which is, um, and then, um, I mean, that's, that's also part of the research we did. And, and uh, you can, there's so much to talk about it. You can you can you can go in and out of it, or you can talk about the the reasons and and how it can be um, it can be helped, mm -hmm. but that's not happening. Mm -hmm. right. um, but then we 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 really focused on the inner world of this one person, rather than on on the on the big social issue. That was the other thing too, and that was interesting because we had to use all of these very real factors to build this character, like um, the sexual trauma that she experienced while in the military, which happens to the, so yes, the when I did the research, the, the numbers are out of this world, how many people experience sexual trauma in the military. And also, um, the challenging part of the film really also was to portray that this is a woman who suffers from bipolar. This is a woman who suffers from MST. This is a woman who has lost her child. This is a woman who is homeless. And this is a woman named Bikini Moon. And that's the most important part because all of these other things, they are factors, but it's not who she is. It's the things that she's gone through. And that was important to me too, in terms, you know, people suffer from mental illness. They are not their illness. It's, these are the things that they're working through to be themselves, you know, but these are the extra filters that they have to deal with, so. 
And, that, and that's part of why she's so complex and compelling. She's fun, she's unpredictable, yet she's gone through all this pain. So what is the result? What, 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 where do you end up? Which is why we t talked to it a little bit earlier, getting to see her in her kind of comfort area was really fun and nice to see that where she was living, you know, in her yeah. headspace was, I think, kind of like a little hopeful or just made no, you weirdly. feel good. Yeah. You know, that would actually was when that was my favorite. That was my favorite scene to film. <laughs> it really was. It was a really heartwarming scene to film in a really weird way. You just repeated the move. <laughs> um, but I think also what was cool about it is it also was the last shot that we filmed. So the end of the film actually was the last, well, not the whole film, but that, that particular scene, which is the last scene, was the last scene that we shot. So it actually really did feel like we had arrived at something. Well, yeah, it was, it was um, yeah. yeah. So what do you guys want people to be talking about at dinner after seeing this movie? That's you. Because um, there's a lot. I mean, there's, like I said, the, I just watched it and there's so many themes that we could spend an hour talking about. But what is maybe for you the biggest takeaway? I don't know. It's, it's, it's about personal responsibility and it's about how much we lie. Um, and it seems like we're surrounded by more lies today than, than, than ever before. Um, I don't know if, if it's true, but that's how it feels. So it would be about that, and it would be about understanding the other human being, understanding the, the person next to you. Um, and Bikini is, is, is one of those people who uh, like provoke you to, to, to think and to feel that more than to think about it. Um, either that or just to be silent and shocked and eat their dinner. <laughs> Silent and shocked is, a, it's, is definitely a possibility. Yeah, I would say mission accomplished. I was silent and shocked. <laughs> You're like, huh? Yeah, I was like, huh? what? Uh, let's go to the audience for a couple of questions before we get out of here. You first. Hey, how you doing? I'm interested in knowing the, how you picked the title because the title looks like very interesting and it, it makes you like want to find out how you got that name of the movie. Um, well, it's... Um, it's misleading, like so many, so many things in the film. It's you think it's something light and fun, and uh, but also um, it sort of doesn't make sense. Bikini Beach or Bikini Sunshine that would make sense, but Bikini Moon is a little a little strange. And hopefully it wakes you up. It like makes you uh, prick up your ears. That's that's her name. Bikini Moon Davis is her name. Um, so it was, it was this combination of like, um, words that, that make sense only in a particular, particular way. Next question. Hi, Condola. Hi. Um, in the trailer, it really looks like, uh, it's a, I, you talked about how emotional it was, but how about the physicality for you? Cause it seems like Whoa. you go through quite a bit in this film. <laughs> Physically. Yeah, I did, and I actually, I trained quite a bit. I trained for about two months. Um, one arm push. -ups. Yeah, I trained quite a bit. We did those? Well, <laughs> close. <laughs> but I trained. I trained really hard. Um, being that she was um, homeless and also she's got her own addictions, there was a certain physicality that I was, that I wanted to not just have makeup, but actually did want to kind of find a physical frame that felt, correct to me in terms of the storytelling of it. So I actually trained harder than I ever had to as well for this physically. So yeah, it was a, all around, it was a, quite, the, quite the journey. <laughs> and one last question. Hi, first of all, I want to commend you for making this film. Um, this month is Mental Awareness Month. I don't know if you knew that. Um, this is a very taboo topic um, for our community as African American women. Yes. We don't really address um, mental illness yes. because we feel like we have to be superheroes and we can be weak. So, how did you feel um, doing this role and bringing awareness to such an important topic in our community? As you said, it's incredibly important, and any any chance that we have, um, any opportunity that we have to remove that stigma is an opportunity to take. So it was, um, that was also something that for me personally, I was very excited to take this role on and, and, um, and tell a story about a human being. And that's what I mean too when I say how all of these aspects of her, even her illness, these are aspects of her. But that's another reason why it was important to also portray her as a human so that we can remember like, there's no reason for stigma because we're all humans. You know, we all have these, 
things that we could, yeah, yeah, but we're humans. And so that was highly gratifying. Thank you so much. I, mm. I'm, I will be checking it out. Cool. And definitely for me living in New York City, um, walking past the homeless people on the street and sort of just always remembering that you don't fully know what somebody's experience is and you don't know what their reality is or their truth and just to be compassionate. Yeah. Right. And talk to people. So I'm excited for people to see Bikini Moon. If you want to check it out, it's in theaters today. Give it up for Condola and meet you. (laughs) 